Good morning. It's an early start for me today. Um, I'm here at uh, Red Hill at 7.45 actually. Uh, we're heading off to Blackbush today to film an airfield review and I'm here early because I thought it was going to be icy and frosty. Uh, the forecast suggested well we had snow yesterday um, so I was expecting to have to spend an extra half hour defrosting the aircraft but I'm just walking up to the aircraft now and to be fair everything here doesn't look as, as bad as I was expecting but we'll see what the airframe looks like. Blackbush is an interesting airfield. Um, some might say they avoid it because it's very uh, close to Farnborough's controlled airspace. In fact its ATZ is partly within Farnborough's controlled airspace. It's also got uh, Heathrow's control zone off to the east, uh, a busy gliding site off to the southwest of it as well. Uh, so as I say some people avoid the area like the plague but today we're going to fly in, I'm going to detail how to do it and I'm going to give, give you some really good practical tips on how to make uh, a trip to Blackbush trouble free. There was a little ice on the wings and stabilator, but my Type 1 de-icing fluid made removing that very easy. This stuff isn't cheap, £9 a litre in fact, but if you buy a 20 litre drum from Poolies and use my code TFR at the checkout, you'll save about a tenner. This is Red Hill Information Echo. Time 0850 hours. Automatic. Runway in use. 06. Surface wind, 06011 knots, varying between 010 and 09, 0 degrees. Visibility, 10 kilometers or more, broken 2,200 feet. Cloud types not available. Temperature, plus 1, Q point, minus 2, QNH, 1030. Acknowledge receipt of information echo and QNH on first contact. Red Hill Tower, good morning. Golf Bravo Mike, India, Victor, PA28, parked opposite the tower. Request taxi, uh, we have outbound with Echo 1030. Golf Bravo Mike, India, Victor, Red Hill Tower, good morning, forward your message. Good morning, opposite the tower, request taxi, VFR flight to Blackbush, 1POB. Good India, Victor, 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 Now Blackbush wouldn't want it known that they're quite difficult, but I think it's an inescapable truth that it is one of the more difficult airfields to operate. I mean, there are 29 pages of rules and procedures on their website. I've, I've flown into international airports with less hassle than Blackbush, but just because there's a lot of reading material and a lot of airspace in the vicinity, that shouldn't mean that you should avoid it. Trimmer, set for takeoff. Emergency gear extension override controls. Very important this in case anything's frozen up. Doors, landing light, transponder, pedo heat is already on. Left hand seat takeoff runway 06, uh, climb straight ahead, then a left turn after the farm. Climbing 1,400 feet uh, at the junction, we make a left turn, talk to Farnborough. We got that tuned. Got a problem on the ground, we will close the throttle and stop. If we've taken off, we'll close the throttle, push forward, glide, try and land back. 97 is the glide. If we can't land back, we're looking for a field to the left or right. 97 is the glide. Closing the throttle. Shutdown checks will be mixture, uh, master, and fuel cutoff. Golf India Victor Bravo 2, ready for departure. Golf India Victor Hall Bravo 2, after departure, left turn out of our junction, not above our tree, 1,400 feet. Hold position, Bravo 2, after departure, left turn via junction, not above altitude, 1,400 feet, Golf Bravo, Mike Indy Victor. Golf Indy Victor, correct, backtrack, line up, runway 06. Backtrack, line up, runway 06, Golf Indy Victor. OK, good stuff. Clear on the climb out, clear on approach. Golf Indy Victor, runway 06, Hurston 07010, not clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff from Y06, copy the Victor. Then we've got good power, T's and P's are in the green, airspeed is increasing.
Up the brakes, gear up. Feel that easterly wind. Crabbing me that way. 200 feet to go. And one stop there, got a bit of low cloud actually. Which was a bit unexpected, weren't expecting that. Landing light, transponder, Peter Heat. Gear up, flap up. Uh, auto gear extension. And it's a little bit bumpy today, it's a 30 knot upper wind, so I feel a bit rough up here. Go for Victor Junction, request frequency change, Farnborough radar 133, decimal 440. Go for the Victor, score call security, free call Farnborough, bye. Free call Farnborough, score call security, go for Victor, bye. Not as bad as it looked. You know, it's actually about 1800 feet, I'm okay, which is kind of my minimum VFR along here. Now it's a very short hop to Blackbush, 20 minutes at most really. I throttled uh, quite a long way back to slow us down so I can give myself more time to prepare. There's a lot that's going to happen here in a short amount of time and I'm going to have to have my wits about me to ensure I don't stray into controlled airspace. I'm going to need to keep my eyes open for traffic. So rather than me talk you through the local airspace and the join here from the cockpit, we'll uh, cut to my soothing voiceover voice. <laughs> so let's have a look at the detail here, and this is uh, a, a Sky Demon uh, representation of the airspace. We're coming from uh, Red Hill here, over to the east, and we're tracking down towards Farnborough's controlled airspace. Watch for this spot of controlled airspace that I'm marking here. Uh, it's got a bit of a gotcha this one, the base of that is 2,000 feet so if you end up going along here make sure you're below that or have the clearance to enter that bit of the CTA. It's a bit of a trap that one and does catch a few people out. Now we're going to be approaching from the south and there are several ways of doing this. I'm going to show you my preferred way when we get back into the cockpit but I want to show you what the, what the issues are with trying to join Blackbush directly from the south. Now you're going to need a zone transit from Farnborough to get into their Class D. Once you're in that, if you're going to try and go direct to Blackbush of course you're going to be likely to go through the Farnborough ATZ and that will mean that you're going to be stuck talking to Farnborough until quite late, probably once you're past the extended centre line of the runway. That gives you very little time to get on the radio to Blackbush and obtain the aerodrome information before entering the ATZ. And I find that can go uh, pretty quickly and you're on top of Blackbush with just seconds to spare and you haven't really got a mental picture of what's going on in the circuit either. Um, so I'm going to show you my preferred way in a moment. Now if you were going that way, perhaps you've got two radios, you can maybe get on the radio and speak to Blackbush before getting there, that might help. And what you do, do then is you would join overhead at uh, 1600 foot height, um, which is about 1900 feet on the QNH. And you join overhead and then you'd descend on the dead side. Uh, and come in and then you'd be downwind then for runway 07 which is the runway in use today or if you're going to be uh, on the opposite uh, runway then you do it the other way around of course. Now if you get to this point here and you can't get uh, word in at Blackbush your escape route is probably going to be along here uh, out to the west through the military air traffic zone um, to clear Blackbush to then come back in to enter Blackbush from the north. Now if you're coming from the north there really is no issue, it's a very simple join. Uh, you're in Class G airspace, basically uh, at the aerodrome boundary you'd begin your descent on the dead side to circuit height which is 800 feet which is about 1100 feet on the QNH and then you join crosswind uh, for runway 25 or crosswind for runway 07. But there is some noise abatement and I'm going to show you that now on the aerodrome website. Now I mentioned earlier that the rules and procedures for the airfield run into 29 pages that is quite a lot of information there and maybe they could edit that down a little bit but this is very well written actually and some really good diagrams in this airfield information and it will answer all of your questions so do have a read of this if you're coming in you can see the noise abatement areas marked red here and we're going to avoid those which does affect our crosswind join and we're going to make a crosswind join uh, in the cockpit in the moment and I'm going to show you um, how we do that and the trick for avoiding this big area of, uh, uh, of uh, noise abatement area here at Yately. 
We can now see that we've got the bit of the ATZ that's within the Farnborough CTR and we can fly in that subject to the rules of Class D airspace without a clearance as long as we're talking to Blackbush and we're squawking the right squawk. A really helpful feature here is the M3 which marks uh, the edge of the local flying area so we maintain north of the M3 and we should be fine. One thing to watch here is on the downwind legs what we don't want to do is extend downwind too much because that will put us in the class D either to the west or to the east. We can see there's a nice lake here and that's uh, I think called Hawley Lake and as long as you turn uh, base before reaching that lake that should keep you out of the class D. So let's head back into the cockpit and I'm going to give you my tips for A, avoiding this bit of noise abatement area here and also joining from the south without having to find ourselves right on top of uh, Blackbush uh, at the last second. The Flying Reporter Aerodrome Review Series is sponsored by AOPA UK. I'm a member of AOPA not because of what I can directly get from them, but because I want to support the work they do in my name. Just this month, they've been having a cross-bench meeting in the House of Lords, raising the issue of the UK's decision to opt out of EGNOS and campaigning for us to get our GPS precision approaches back. If you want to support work like this, then join AOPA now. Flying Reporter followers can get a 25% discount off new AOPA UK members Memberships, click the link on the screen in the description or use the QR code to find out more. I think with flying it's all about making life as easy as, as you possibly can. Yes, getting there quickly and expeditiously is often an admirable aim, but also giving yourself enough time to do things and prepare for your join is also equally important, if not more so. So I've got a tip for you, we're not going to join um, overhead having just gone through Farnborough's airspace. Uh, we're going to route to the north, uh, but crossing the zone to the east of Farnborough, if they'll allow us. That will give us time to track over to the north of Blackbush, and then we can join from the dead side at our leisure from uncontrolled airspace. So let's see how that works out. Now I'm going to call up Farnborough zone for a transit. Farber Radar, Golf at Bravo, Mike, India, Victor, request zone transit. Golf Bravo, Mike, India, Victor, Farber Radar, pass the message. Golf at Bravo, Mike, India, Victor, PA28 Arrow, Red Hill to Blackbush, two miles north of Dorking, altitude 1,800 feet, VFR. Request transit to the east of the Farber ATZ via the uh, Bagshot mast. Uh, to reroute into Blackbush from the north, and a basic service. Cop India Victor, the QN8 1030, Squawk 0460, basic service. QN8 1030, Squawk 0460, basic service, Golf India Victor. Note that Farber has got a special frequency for zone transits, 133.440, it's not the last frequency. Cross Bravo, Mike India, Vic, you are good to cross from the control zone. VFR on us above altitude 2,000 feet, stair towards Blackbush. Roger, cleared to cross the Farmer control zone, VFR not above altitude 2,000 feet uh, to Blackbush. Uh, request uh, routing to the east of uh, the Farmer ATZ, Golf India, Vic. Golf India, Vic, so that routing is approved and read back correct. Roger, Golf India, Vic. Just checking there, because they didn't mention specifically what my routing, um, which meant I could technically go where I want, but they said routing Blackbush, so I was just worried that they thought maybe I was going to go straight into Blackbush, but I'm going to route to the east, give myself plenty of time, I can tune to the Blackbush frequency, get the aerodrome information, and, uh, and then join when I'm happy to. So, we're just going to get the Blackbush frequency in, uh, 122305. This will only add a few minutes. I, I don't really think this should add much time at all, actually. Um, five minutes, five, ten minutes at most, just going around the, around the edge, basically. Coming up on Guildford now, uh, I'm just going to double check the join. So it's going to be circuits at 800. The overhead is 1600 QFE. So uh, 1125 QNH is the uh, circuit altitude. Of course, uh, the rules applicable to Class D will apply for this crossing. 
So we need five kilometres of visibility uh, to cross the CTR, otherwise we would need a uh, special VFR clearance from Farnborough. And also a bit of the Blackbush ATZ is within the Farnborough CTR, and thus that's uh, restricted by the Class D rules as well. So if you are downwind uh, at Blackbush, you're going to be in uh, Class D in the local flying area, and you'd have to apply by the uh, Class D weather minima. Uh, you can get a special VFR clearance into Blackbush and out of Blackbush. Um, have a look on their website for, for more specific instructions. Radar control in two miles, Golf with you, Victor. Yeah, you can get a clearance into Blackbush uh, SBFR. Um, I think they limit the number of traffic in the circuit. Uh, and you can't have any instrument traffic coming in. And if there is any instrument traffic in coming in, they will announce on the radio that that's imminent, and you're, you're going to be expected then to, uh, to land or leave the area. I see Farnborough Air, Aerodrome over there, there's big hangars that we can see in the distance. Looking out for Blackbush, going to be routing to the east, and the danger here is that you end up in uh, the London CTR, which of course is not desirable uh, to anyone. Um, and there's a mass. I think I can see it ahead, I'm not sure. I uh, don't think it is that actually, it's more over there. Black, uh, backshot mast. It's a strange stubby looking mast. We'll see if we can identify it. Our heading here is uh, 337. And our track is 322. So we're on the course, I'm just looking out for that mast. Sometimes with the sun you can't see it. Yeah, I can see the mast in the distance now, it's, it's, it's shaded by the uh, cloud. But as long as you stay to the west of that mast, you're outside of the CTR. Go for Victor, frequency change please to Black Bush 122.305. Yeah, Victor, school consecutive on the radar service, terminate down free call Blackbush, goodbye. Free call Blackbush, score security, go for you, Victor. Uh, put uh, Blackbush in here. So I've got my time now. I've already been listening to Blackbush. There's a couple of aircraft taxiing, but nothing else that I've heard on frequency. But you see how this gives me time now to listen. I'm outside a controlled airspace. I haven't got that sudden rush to join the overhead. Uh, and I can see Blackbush. I can start orientating myself, looking at the noise abatement areas that I'd like to avoid. Just come slowly around. Let's give them a call. Blackbush information, good morning, Golf Bravo Mike, India, Victor, four miles to the northeast, inbound request aerodrome information. Golf Bravo Mike, India, Victor, Blackbush information, good morning, from a 07 with the right hand circuit, QFE 1018, report entering the ATZ. 07, right hand circuit, QFE 1018, Wilco, Golf India, Victor. Now we don't want to come in straight from the north because that will take us over Yateley, which is just here, and that's a noise abatement area. Breeder, uh, fuel, I've got a mixture of rich radios, engine temperatures and pressures, direction indicator is aligned and altimeter. We've got uh, QNH and QFE 1018. One thing that will help you identify Blackbush is there's a big car company, that, an, an auction company for cars, I think, and uh, you'll see the cars all parked up on the uh, northern perimeter and sometimes the uh, western perimeter. Now I'm looking at the disused runway here, which is uh, that, uh, which is the one I want to align to. Because if I track that down and go crosswind, that will keep me to the west of Yateley, which is the noise abatement area we need to avoid. Go with you, Victor. Entering the ATZ from the northwest, uh, out height 1,500 feet, descending circuit altitude. Golf India Victor, Squawk 7010, report downwind, no reported circuit traffic. Squawk 7010, report downwind, Roger, Golf India Victor. So we're descending now. Got the gear horn going because we've got uh, power to quite low speed. So we're going to get the gear down now just to help us come down. We want to come down to 800. And I'm looking at the disused runway here. Which, uh, it's a bit difficult to see in the sun. And as long as I sort of track that, I'm keeping Yateley off to the uh, the east there. Brakes. Oh, I had a green light out, but it was just the bulb. Brakes, undercarriage mixture, fuel, landing light, car heat, we don't have direction indicator aligned, and doors are locked.
Where is the runway? We're just crossing it, aren't we? Yeah, just crossing the runway now. Here's another tip for you. Don't go any further south than the M3 motorway. Which is difficult to see in this sun. If in doubt, keep the circuit tight. And if you've got a fast aircraft like mine, don't delay the turn to downwind because that will invariably get you a bit further over. There's Hawley Lake, which marks the down, end of the downwind leg, or something you need to turn downwind before. So I'm going to turn now. I'm going to see the motorway. So turning right hand downwind now. Golf India Victor, right hand downwind, runway 07 to land. Golf India Victor, report final 07. We'll go, Golf India Victor. OK, it's all working out. So we've got the motorway there. I don't know if you can see it. As long as we're this side of the motorway, the north side of it, we're all good. Brakes, undercarriage mixture, we've already done. Fuel, landing light, carpet we don't have, direction indicator, and doors are locked. We're strapped in. There's a town here, so we want to turn base before that. We don't want to fly over that. Let's go base. Back a bit on the power. And we probably don't want to start our descent too early because we're already 200 feet lower than we would be at a normal circuit high. That come flaps to two. Don't really want to turn below 600 feet, so you're going to start coming down now. Here on approach. Golf India Victor, final runway 07 to land. Golf India Victor, surface wind 050 degrees, 14 knots, runway 07, land at your discretion. Landing runway 07, Golf India Victor. OK, runway is clear, coming back on the power now, reds, blues, three greens. You can see all those cars now that I was mentioning earlier. Nice long runway this, uh, just over a thousand metres, so no panic really, we don't want to come in short do we over the uh, cars here in the car park. Slight crosswind from the left. And now we can start coming down a bit deeper. Always good to have this printed out. Stand one is on the apron. Now normally there's visitor parking. We'll see it coming up on the left here. I don't know if you can see it. Actually, it's got a sign helpfully saying visitor parking. Now this is a bit that can catch you out. There's two ways to go here, but it's got a sign here saying all aircraft to the left. So we come to the left of the fire station. We've got the fuel station on the left here. This would be the visitor parking along here, if the, I guess if the, if the grass wasn't soft. Okay. So 
welcome to Blackbush. Uh, I'm here on the apron, which is nice to be parked on the apron, uh, although there is grass parking, as I pointed out on the way in. Um, we can see we've got the fire station over there next to the windsock and the fuel station behind it. We'll go and have a look at the fuel station in a moment. And then we've got the tower building just over here. Um, to be honest, as a visitor, you're not really going to, I suspect, need to go and speak to them in the tower, but if you did, there's a, an intercom on the bottom there and a, a buzzer where you can go and uh, attract attention from the admin or the tower themselves. We'll hopefully try and zip up to the tower in a, in a wee while and have a look uh, up in the tower. But uh, yeah, sunny day here, cold, a bit breezy and not terribly busy today. Um, but we'll go and have a, a little look around. So let's talk a little bit about the history of Blackbush. And there's a red plaque here on the side of the tower building, which is quite interesting. It's from the National Transport Trust and it reads, Open 1942 as RAF Hartford Bridge, later Blackbush Airport. From 1946, hosted many independent airlines before closure in 1960, reopened 1962. And it was very, a very busy base during uh, World War II. And I think they had five squadrons based here and it was a very busy base uh, on D-Day. Um, interestingly, the airfield was also at the forefront of a bit of technology called FIDO. It's got nothing to do with dogs. It's the fog investigation and dispersal operation. Now, basically in World War II, uh, Blackbush, like many of the British airfields, uh, suffered from fog occasionally and it meant it was quite difficult for the troops to return from their missions, their uh, reconnaissance and bombing missions um, over the channel. And so they developed this system based, it, it kind of originated from Farnborough, but this was the first base for it to be deployed. And they had a network of pipes that ran down the side of the runway. In fact, the aerial photographs um, that we can see here on Google Earth, you might be able to make out the channel of pipes or the sort of imprint of the pipes down the side of the runway. And into these pipes they pump hundreds of thousands of litres of fuel, avgas basically, petrol. And somebody would go down the runway with a flaming lance and ignite um, little jets uh, of this fuel to set fires all the way down the side of the runway. And this was enough to heat the air above the runway and disperse the fog. And I think it worked. Now the reason why it didn't really take off, I mean there were a few uh, deployments of this, was the sheer quantity of fuel required just to clear a bit of fog for an hour or so would take hundreds of thousands of litres of fuel and so it wasn't really uh, something that uh, continued for, for very long. But Blackbush was very much at the forefront of the deployment of that uh, 1940s technology. The airfield wants to make more of its heritage. There's a large sign next to the car park showing the passenger aircraft that used to operate from here in its heyday. And there's actually a relic of one of those aircraft currently being restored here. Now this here is a Vickers Viking that would, I think, carry about 20 passengers at a time. And in the 50s and 60s there were, I think, around 30 of them based here at Blackbush. And this uh, Viking, called the Vagabond, is Golf Alpha Golf Romeo Whiskey and it's been brought here by the Blackbush Aviation Trust who are restoring it and I think they want to set up some kind of aviation heritage centre here at uh, Blackbush as part of the the plans going forward and this Vickers Viking is one of only six I think remaining today and this has got a really interesting story to it because uh, in 1999 I think it was it was at Vienna Airport or certainly very near to Vienna Airport and it was kitted out as a it was right next to a fast food restaurant and it was you know a static object and people could have their children's parties <laughs> in the Viking Vagabond when it was at Vienna Airport and the Blackbush Heritage Trust raised £50,000 I think to purchase it and bring it back here and now it's undergoing restoration. Um, what a great story eh? <laughs> Blackbush has some 
interesting plans I noticed recently where they want to develop the airfield but they're being caught out a little bit by the fact that this land that they're based on is common land which is preventing them from doing all the things that they want to do so I'm going to go and meet up with the airfield manager now Chris Gazard in the passenger lounge and uh, find out all about those plans. You're feeling uncomfortable now? Yeah, very uncomfortable. <laughs> I did a Sky News piece for the electric aircraft last year. I'm so glad they didn't use it. It was, it was horrendous. Viewers, I come here just to frighten the airfield managers. That's, that's, <laughs> that's all it is. Chris, good to see you. Thanks for having me and for a cup of tea to warm me up after that uh, very cold morning. Cold morning. Yeah. So, you know, I've said in the video there, and my viewers will see, you know, it's inescapable, isn't it, that it's a, it's a tricky place to come into compared to a lot of other places. But you're keen that people aren't put off by that. Yeah, I mean, it's complex. We've got complex airspace around us. We've got, obviously, Farnborough to the south. You've got Heathrow to the east and, and, um, and above us, of course. Um, but it's, it's not terribly difficult once you get your head, head around it. Mm. Um, the key thing is coming in with a plan and, and knowing what you're going to do when you get here. Um, and if you're lucky enough to have a second radio to try and contact us nice and early. Um, and the FISOs will give you all the help you need um, to get in. They'll give you the traffic. Um, as, as to everything is, it is a busy airfield, um, and if you come in unprepared, expecting a straight-in approach on a busy Saturday afternoon, yeah. you will come unstuck. Yeah. Um, but at other time, other times, you may well get the straight-in um, isn't a problem. And if you come on a busy Saturday afternoon, just come in and have a look at our website with our circuit diagrams, and hopefully all the information um, is there to, to help you get in. If in doubt, mm. pick up the phone. Yeah. OK, so you're happy for people to give you a call and ask. Absolutely. I mean, yes, it does look complicated on paper, but actually, once you know it, it's, yeah. a, it's a piece of cake, actually, isn't it? It, it really is. It's, it's, not... a, it's a couple of, you know, it's, it's a couple, couple of goes and you probably, you probably nailed it. Yeah. Um, particularly with the farmer stuff, it's getting, yeah. getting easier and easier. And actually, some of the base pilots here are saying it's easier than it was before mm. um, without the controlled airspace, because at least you know what you're going to do. You know, they, once you've done it a couple of times... You're going to get given the same routing. You're going to go through the same waypoints. Whereas, when they were vectoring traffic here, there, and everywhere because they had no prescribed routes, mm. you were, you, know, you didn't know what to expect on a given day. Mm. So, Blackbush has got some interesting things going on. I read um, you're on common land here. I think is what it's called. Yeah, so we're one of I think two airports that still have active common land on us. And that is a problem. It's a problem. It means essentially you can't build anything. Um, everything here is sort of prefab porter cabin. What can we get away with? And it's been that way for the best part of 60 years. Mm. Um, we've got a cafe which is in a building that was built with a temporary planning commission for three years in, the, in 1963. <laughs> um, and, you know, I, when, I, when I travel to other aerodromes, you do see it's, it's not just us. There's a lot of aerodromes mm. are, that are in facilities that are massively outdated. Um, the blocker to us is, is not like other aerodromes where we, you have... Um, have external factors working against us. For, for here, we've got a very motivated um, shareholder who's keen to see it promoted as, an, as a GA airfield. Um, and we've got the funding there. Um, for, for us, it's the blocker is, is the common land. So the application's gone in uh, last week and it'll run, you know, it'll run probably take most of this year to get through that process. Uh, but it's a pretty compelling case. It's essentially we take a section of the airport out of the common land register and in return we give the local community a equal size space an equal size area down in um in cottage farm um once that's once that's all resolved then a lot of what we want to achieve in terms of hangarage and new facilities all falls under permitted development which airports benefit from um, so we're, we're pretty we're pretty excited about what, what can come. So just uh, give me a, the top three or four things that people can expect to happen if it all goes through. What will we see that changes? Hangarage. Yeah. N number one, yeah. Um, getting these planes out of the elements. Um, we hope to have some sort of maintenance facility here. Mm. Um, again, to you know to provide something for to those who base their aircraft here. And the second is, you know, final one is a a, a new terminal and cafe with. You know, proper modern facilities um, in there that, that are open to all. Now, what about GA though? Where does it, you know that sounds like you're factoring GA into all of that? People might be suspicious that it's all about a master plan to get more jets in here and 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 turn, you know make it squeeze the GA a bit more, which we see we see repeated in other places. Yeah, I mean Blackbush is naturally limited by its runway length. We're never going to see 
you know, golf streams coming in and out, you know, all day, every day. Um, but we do have a healthy executive jet um, clientele as well. Um, it's typically about 5%. I don't see it growing massively from mm. that from that number. Uh, last year, we had our busiest year for fixed wing like GA. So um, GA is doing just as strong and it is our bread and butter. It is about giving facilities um, facilities for those. And we, we anticipate that we don't really need to change much in the way of our visitor landing fees and things like that because the additional revenue will come from people prepared to pay more to put their aircraft in a hangar as opposed to park it outside in the elements. Uh, likewise, you know, there, is a, there is a desire to get some executive jets based here, again, because of the parking revenue they bring. At the moment, we just get the landing fee and a bit of fuel. If you have aircraft based here, A, you get the parking fee, you get more reliable landing revenue. Um, and and the, other, the, other, the other sector is the rotary. Um, you know, it's massively um, short of space in the London area for executive rotary. We lost some hangars over on the north side about 10 years ago now. Um, to the car auctions, which previously housed um, that type of business, and it would be good to get that back here again. Exciting times for Blackbush then, hopefully. Watch this space. <laughs> <laughs>Enjoy your lunch or whatever, and a good view of the taxiway out the front as well, so you can watch the aircraft go by. So just having a look at the menu, quite like their uh, menu that's displayed above the counter there in their kind of uh, airline terminal kind of graphics and text. Um, it's quite a lot on there actually, Cumberland sausages, vegan sausages, chicken nuggets, um, jacket potatoes and fries. There's alcoholic drinks, in fact, all day breakfasts, pancakes, bakery. There's a little uh, soft drink counter around the corner there as well, and um, some cakes too. So, quite a lot to choose from. Um, I haven't had chips in a long time, and I know I shouldn't, um, but I'm going to have ham, egg, and chips today. <laughs> well, that's quite a generous portion, isn't it? Some salad there too. And that cost £7.50, I think it was, so yeah, reasonable value. You can see why the cafe is busy, can't you? I'll tell you what, this, the one thing that we do quite well in this country at our airfields is the cafes. You know, you, you won't go abroad and you won't necessarily have somewhere that does cook food like this. So we're really lucky in the UK that most places have got a cafe going. So I haven't yet told you how you pay your landing fee here at Blackbush and there are three ways of doing it. The first way is through AeroPS, which is the app-based system that I'm a big fan of. I'm a, a UK ambassador for the product. Um, all I do is enter the airport that I'm at, EGLK, put in my registration number, Golf Bravo Mike India Victor, put in that I have landed. I arrived at 9.45 or 9.40, shall we say. And let's say I'm going to take off at, uh, I don't know, what time is it now? Take off at, at 2.15 or 2.20 or something like that. Should give me plenty of time. And hit next. One landing. Next. It's got my details in there. Hit pay. And it's gone through already. Quick as a flash. I love it. The other way to pay is through a portal on the airport's website. That seems to work quite well. And the other way to pay is over at the fire station. And that's where we're going to next. So we're kind of over the other side of the airport now by the fuel pump actually. They've got self-service fuel here, somebody's just filling up now and you can use your credit card to pay for your fuel or you can pay over at the fire station for your fuel and they do offer a discount on your landing fee. I, I forget exactly how much it is and it could well have changed by the time you see this but they do offer a discount 
on the landing fee if you uplift fuel. And I think the best way to get that discount applied is to fuel up here and go and pay your landing fee over at the fire station, which is just over the taxiway. As for flight training, there are four fixed wing flying schools at Blackbush. There's Air First at the bottom of the terminal building, Semet Aviation, the newest school on site, Airability, which helps disabled people learn to fly, and Blackbush Aviation. Blackbush Aviation is the only ATO or approved training organisation here. The others are DTOs. Blackbush Aviation is also an AOPA corporate member, which means that they have access to advice and support from AOPA, access to the AOPA Aerobatic Certificate and the AOPA UK Wing Scheme. John Atley is one of the instructors here. So you're one of the bigger flying schools here, I think it's fair to say. Uh, we, we are, yes. We've um, been here, in fact, we've just celebrated our 10th anniversary, right. um, which is a fantastic achievement. And um, yes, yeah, Steve and Ali, the owners, have uh, set up here 10 years ago and the, and the club has gone from strength to strength since then. How many members do you have at the moment? So I think we have somewhere in the region of uh, over 300 members and, and students currently using us. And what kind of courses do you operate? So as an authorised training um, organisation we're able to offer the full modular training from zero hours all the way up through to um, professional pilots through PPL, night training, CPL, MEIR and UPRT. You've got, you've got a mix of, of aircraft on the fleet, haven't you? We have um, got a mix of aircraft. Our, our fleet is, um, it, we've got a nice modern fleet actually, um, including certainly for our uh, professional pilots, a couple of diamond aircraft, DA-40 and a DA-42, which really gives them the modern cockpit feel that they are likely to experience when they move on into the airlines, uh, the glass cockpit. And at the other end of the fleet, we've got um, uh, three Sonaka aircraft, which we use for our, our basic training and a couple of PA-28s in, in between. So yes, we've got, we've got a, a decent fleet. And what's it like operating from Blackbush? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a popular but busy GA airfield, isn't it? It is very popular and it's, and it's certainly busy. Uh, and you have to mix it up with, with some uh, private jets that like to, to come in and out as well. People worry a bit about flying in and out of Blackbush because of its proximity to Heathrow and uh, some Class D airspace of Farnborough. But um, like any airspace, you know, if you're speaking to the right people in, in good time, it's, it shouldn't be anything to worry about. And um, we have, uh, you know, excellent access just southwest of London, so it's, it's an easy place to get to. And actually, the proximity of that airspace is, is good for training um, because it gets people used to that uh, before they go off and start flying on their own. Golf Bravo Charlie India Romeo Blackbush information standby. Break, break, Golf Zulu Whiskey, surface wind 070 degrees, 7 knots, 07, touch and go at your discretion. Golf Zulu Whiskey. So we've just come up into the uh, tower here and a good view of the airfield from up here, nice and warm up here as well. Vikram's uh, the FISO and uh, Omar here is the assistant and uh, the circuit's suddenly got quite busy. <laughs> Which is good timing because it's time for me to depart back to Red Hill. So I've enjoyed my little tour here at uh, Blackbush, I hope you have too, but the video is not over yet. I'm going to climb down the two flights of stairs or whatever it is down to the apron now, get back into India Victor to show you a departure from Blackbush which has its complications too because we're going to be heading south straight into controlled airspace and we're going to need a clearance to do that on the ground so I'm going to show you that now. I'll click my fingers and uh, you'll be back in India Victor with the engine running on the apron. So I've already communicated with the tower that uh, I'm going to need a clearance to transit controlled airspace and they'll be doing that now while I'm doing my power checks here. So they'll be on the phone to Farnborough to get me a squawk code and a clearance to enter controlled airspace. It usually follows a similar pattern where you're routed to the M3 Junction 4, so that's what we're expecting. Copy Victor Foxtrot, ready for departure clearance. Golf Bravo Mike India Victor Fabric leads you to cross the Fabric Control Zone via the M3 Junction 4. VFR, not above altitude 2,000 feet. Hold north of the M3 Junction 4. Squawk 0460. UQNH 1029R. Next frequency, Farnborough Radar 133 decimal 440. Farnborough clears me to cross the control zone via the M3 Junction 4. VFR, not above altitude 2,000 feet. Hold north of the M3 Junction 4, Squawk 0460, QNH 1029er, next 133.440, Golf Bravo Mike, Victor. 
North India Victor, correct. Taxi holding point Echo 1, report ready for departure. Taxi Echo 1, we'll code off with you, Victor. A lot of information there, and I think Blackbush used to have a cheap Golf sheet. Golf India Romeo, right? Golf India Romeo, roger. Which you could have printed out already, so you just filled in the boxes. So quite a lot happens in the next few minutes, so you won't hear me talking too much. Uh, I've got to make sure I hold north of the M3 junction for... A uh, 10 degree right turn after departure for noise abatement. And that puts me on track for the M3 junction 4. Golf India Victor, Echo 1 ready for departure. Golf India Victor, the helicopter training area south of 07 are active. Surface wind 07, 0 degrees, 1 4 knots, runway 07, take off at your discretion. Roger, taking off runway 07, Golf India Victor. Clear on base. Clear on final. Okay, we've got power set. T's and P's are in the green, airspeed is increasing. Golf India Romeo, final. Touch and go. Golf India Romeo, sir. Takeoff time is 02. Golf India Romeo, touch and go at your discretion. Golf India Romeo. Contact Farmer Radar 133.440, good afternoon. 133.440, good day, Golf India Victor. Maps are up. Gear is up. Farmer Radar, Golf Bravo, Mike India Victor. From Mike India Victor, Farmer Radar, Squawk Ident, and report you passing altitude on the QNH 1029. Squawk Ident passing altitude 1,100 feet, QNH 1029, Golf India Victor. India Victor, radar control and report your requested routing after M3 Junction 4. Uh, Roger, direct uh, Red Hill, Golf India Victor. Uh, Golf India Victor, thank you, uh, radar control. Radar control, Golf India Victor. India Victor, cancel the hold, route direct, Red Hill is approved. Cancel hold, route direct, Golf India Victor. So actually, you know, we, got, we, we didn't have to wait there. You might have had to hold, and that hold will be coming up momentarily here. T's and P's are all good. Flaps gear, quarter gear, come off. Not above 2,000 here. So here's the M3, I think this is the M3 Junction 4. We're just uh, passing over now, just so you can maybe take a look at it in the uh, camera view underneath. And this is where we would, couldn't have passed had we not got the uh, onward clearance, but uh, we've been cleared through. And literally, we're going direct Red Hill. It couldn't be easier than that. So I suppose what you will find is the complication is that read back, making a note of that. Maybe listen back to that section of the video and, and practice writing that down and reading that back. And that might help you. So a very quick flight back to Red Hill. Thank you for watching this Flying Reporter Aerodrome review. There's uh, a full back catalogue of airfields I visited already. Do go take a look at that. It's on my website. My thanks to AOPA for sponsoring the Airfield Review series and thanks to you for watching. Uh, do subscribe to make sure that you don't miss the next instalment. Until I see you next time, bye for now.